I just wanted to announce one thing uh, early this morning when I was discussing uh, Skeptic Camp and it's, uh, what it is and its history. I mentioned Reed, and he is now here. So, Yay, Reed! Yeah. Yeah. Who's Reed? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, when did you start this? Uh, was it three years ago? Or? Uh, it was uh, August of 2007 when we had our very first event in Denver. It was a crazy experiment that myself, Rich, Rich Ludwig, probably skeptic over there. And another person started, and that's where uh, Brian and Baxter were invited to speak. And I was very suspicious because Brian and Baxter, as far as I knew, they were another one of those loopy paranormal uh, <laughs> groups. And Uh, in Baxter's, uh, Brian still looks exactly the same, uh, which is coming. Uh, Baxter even has long, black, goth hair, and uh, it's uh, not pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I've, I've, I've been immensely uh, uh, pleased with uh, uh, Brian and Baxter's participation in, in all the Skeptic Camp events. This is the seventh one we've had in Colorado, and they've spoken at each one of them. Well, now that our egos have been sufficiently boosted. <laughs> All right, first off, we are Brian and Baxter from Rocky Mountain Paranormal Research Society uh, out of Denver. And uh, I know the name is a little sketchy there for someone who would be showing up at Skeptic Camp. Well, we call ourselves paranormal claims investigators. What that means is we investigate people's claims that they make. We don't go out looking for ghosts. And uh, that's, that's a big difference. Uh, as you'll see in this investigation. This is a unique investigation. Now, if you can't hear us at any time, just tell Brian to use a mic. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Do we really have to do this? This is sad. Yes, this is sad. Okay, we're going to talk to you about a uh, situation that's uh, going down here in the Springs as we speak. How many people are from Colorado Springs here today? Then, then we have uh, a request for you once we uh, finish this up. But uh, there's a group here in town, Pure Paranormal, who are a science oriented team. They said it, I didn't. Uh, with some really outrageous claims, but uh, one of the things is that they worked closely with the Colorado Springs, Manitou, and Central City cities. Uh, they went as far as to claim that they were the official teams for these cities. Uh, but a great quote here from the co-founder of the group, when asked, are you a skeptic? She says, well, it's safe to say no. <laughs> but in looking at these claims of them being official paranormal teams, none of these cities have actually heard of them. <laughs> so it, it gets even deeper though. Now we're looking at them claiming that they're teaching at CSU. And that's what, what I said. <laughs> well, when you look at it a little closer, they say that they've been offered to teach classes at Colorado State University. Well, the following feed said, it's just a goal school class, but it counts. <laughs> so what, what that means is they've somehow got permission to get on the campus to do a little ghost tour. But that's them teaching at CSU. <laughs> so they love to twist their, their, the facts there a little bit. But for those of you from Colorado Springs, we have uh, the place that this is happening. This is Evergreen Cemetery, one of the city's oldest cemeteries. In fact, we could walk there in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Does anybody have any family uh, or friends buried at Evergreen? You? Okay. Okay. You're going to kind of be special for us. You're going to be our litmus paper for this. <laughs> well, basically the problem, Evergreen Haunted Tours. Basically, what they're going to do is walk around and tell spooky stories and try to talk to the dead in your public cemetery. 
is this ethical? Maybe not so much. And they are out now saying the cemetery is haunted. It is. It's a fact. So you got to come on this tour if you're interested in ghosts. <coughs> but let's take a look at some of their claims. Hopefully we can see these. Can we get you to dip the light? Cuter in the dark. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first one I'm going to show you here is them using a. How many people have heard of the Frank's box or the telephone to the dead or the spirit box? Or, okay, for those of you that haven't, I'm just going to do it really easily. Broken radio, they think, talks to dead people. <laughs> if you want more, ask us later. But in this short clip, and they repeat it a couple of times at the end. The ghost at the cemetery, you gotta remember this is at the cemetery, threatens them with certain death.
So they were handed the keys to the cemetery over a year ago. And they have been spending a lot of time in there. First contact. Now we, uh, we received an email uh, from a woman who was very concerned about this. And uh, she had actually contacted the Benevolent Society, who uh, basically runs the cemetery. And uh, they, when, when she contacted them, because you know, we're like, well, don't, don't talk to us, talk to the Benevolent Society. So she emails them, and they're like, that's great. Can we have you come talk to us, and we'll go over everything and try to sort this out? She kind of panicked a little bit. And she said, no, I think I'm going to have Rocky Mountain Paranormal do it for me, stand in for me. So we went ahead and we sent them uh, an email about what we saw was wrong with them doing these haunted tours. At that point, the Benevolent Society decided that they would uh, go over some of the concerns that they had with this actually going on in the cemetery. Lots of vandalism has happened in the past, as well as a lot of current things going on. Historical information being twisted all over the place. Uh, spreading of urban legends, we're going to go into that one pretty deep here. Uh, disrespectful activities, uh, which we've learned are now unlawful. Uh, encouragement for others to break into the cemetery after it's closed, which we have proof of. And proceeds not being given back to the Benevolent Society and the cemetery as promised. They have delivered back some of the money, but not all. Vandalism. Well, here's a good one. You got this nice uh, angel, and then now we have an angel without a hand. Uh, grave markers being tipped over, uh, crypts being broken into. Um, a lot of this is, is fairly typical for a lot of cemeteries, but uh, when you have these haunted tours that encourage this kind of behavior, uh, whether they mean to or not, this stuff escalates. And uh, anybody know how much it costs just for a headstone these days? Oh, yeah. To repair one. But the big question is, we need to determine how bad it really is, but how do you do that? Well, first, you disguise yourself as any other image of cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> and then you send them an email saying, we want to pay in cash, is that okay? <laughs> because, well, A, all of our PayPal accounts are associated with our real email addresses, and we don't want that happening. But also, it would be interesting to see if a bunch of people show up with cash if they actually report it. Yeah, no paper trail, will they? Now, when you go to start the tour, they make you sign a release. You saw the video before, where the ghost threatened them with certain death. Well, luckily they have a release, so they can't be held responsible. They're dangerous and inherited in investigating the paranormal. Moral or serious personal, spiritual, and mental injuries. Assume full responsibility for the risk of personal, spiritual, mental injury, death, and property damage. So you have to sign this before you can go on the tour. Now that's one of the concerns that the Benevolent Society had was that they would ID them when they had to sign the releases. That was also one of our concerns. Strangely enough, they never ID'd us. They just let us sign it and assume that we signed it as we actually are. But uh, let's, let's look at a little background research here. On their website, they claim we are a licensed and insured paranormal group and registered with the state of Colorado as a nonprofit organization. And they are. They check a little box on their business license that says nonprofit. They're not 501c3. They're not registered with the IRS. It's a very low level nonprofit. But if you look a little closer at their website, 100% of the proceeds go towards a nonprofit group. Or in other words, we're donating it to ourselves. Now, they often donate to other nonprofit organizations, but we haven't found a record of it yet. 